Hey, folks. So, I want to address the comment from My Sky New Zealand. I appreciate your comment and everything, but this is not from water on the window. This line of energy was not water on the window, okay? I have plenty of other videos, even right from this same window with the same device, where it was pouring down rain, and you can see the distortions from the raindrops on the window. The, this is not a distortion from rain or water on the window. And this particular storm here was more of a plasma light storm. There wasn't a lot of moisture with it at all. There was very little rain that fell with this storm, and which which is what leads me to believe that it was some kind of a microwave type of a, an energy form, a microwave of energy um, that just pretty much evaporated all of the moisture, just dried up and fried all of the moisture here in the valley. It's that they believe it was what contributed and what started the ball rolling for the extreme flash drought that was so bad that they had to declare it an emergency that then allowed the policy makers and legislators to change laws here and outlaw useless grass and restrict and limit our use of water and for it, you know, allowed the energy company to charge people more money. I mean, they've raised our power rates up here a couple of different times now since the, you know, emergency was declared for the drought. So, you know, I, I just, I think that this was a very intense line of energy that came toward our location that was released off in the extreme South Pacific. And it's interesting how it kind of draws up energy from ground level. If you watch this, you'll see there's like a tent that's formed. And there are like several different layers to this. If I And you can see there's like four different layers here where energy is being drawn up from ground level into the ap atmosphere, okay? And I believe that um, is what would be referred to as like a reverse uh, negative storm surge because I would consider this a plasma light storm that we were hit with. And um, as it approached ground level, it began to suck up and draw up energy from ground level into the plasma storm. It's like it connected. Think of it like a, like a magnet, like an electromagnet, like an electromagnetic energy making and drawing up right there. You can see it's drawing up energy from ground level, creating this like multi-layered tent thing. There's like one, two, three, four different layers. And you can see there's energy back here still circulating behind it. And it draws up energy from ground level and then it pushes it back into the earth and into our environment here. And, you know, whatever would have been out here in the atmosphere, in the upper atmosphere, in between us here at ground level and this intense line of energy would have been pushed down in us in on us, excuse me, it would have been pushed right down into our atmosphere and dispersed out through our atmosphere. So this essentially would have purged this whole atmosphere out here in the extreme South Pacific, which would have then purified that air for them to then go through and conduct additional tests. And they do that quite often. Look at their own published records and documents, the military and the government and the Navy. They all do those type of things where they purge the upper atmosphere where they're going to be doing tests. And I believe this was a test. This was a, an electromagnetic pulse type of test. And this part here where it starts to draw up energy from ground level, you know, I believe that was what they would refer to as a negative plasma storm surge type of a thing, a negative plasma storm, a reversal in the electromagnetic field and wave and energy. As it met up with the energy down here at ground level, it began to suck it up and then it pushes it right back down in. And now there are some other examples of that type of energy, too. And uh, just to reiterate, you know, for anyone that hasn't watched the numerous other videos that I've done where I've shown this same stuff, and because I'm repetitive, I'll say it again, it would have had to have come from this area out here, okay? The camera was located right down in here in southern Nevada, okay? And it was aimed right off in this direction. So that bubble of energy would have came from this wide open area out here where they have their Pacific Proving Grounds, okay? So when my camera captured that, it was moving in from this direction, up from this direction, okay? And, you know, there's another phenomenon that they call, um, like, a reverse storm surge. And this was something that occurred here. This was back in 2017 when um, the coastlines, the bays and the coastlines along Hurricane Irma's track, in which the ocean has eerily disappeared, leaving locals amazed and wildlife stranded. What exactly was happening? And you could see in this short video here, it was like... No water left in the bay here. And they call this a reverse, a negative storm surge is what they call this, where the water is all sucked out 
and they gave people warnings because this water will return. They do say that. They, um, it, despite that, everybody was all out there. There was a bunch of people out there anyway. Um, but they say that, you know, don't go out there because the water will return. It will return. It's just being sucked out and all of its energy. There's something out there that is drawing it all out of the bay. And that was back in 2017. Uh, you know, you can see there's lots of pictures of people walking out on these areas where the water had just receded from the coastlines. It had been sucked out into the main, you know, storm area where the storm was brewing up. The storm just sucked it all up. Yeah. And they call it a reverse storm surge, a phenomenon called reverse storm surge, where the water was sucked out of the bay. And this was back in 2022 here. So just recent where there was this phenomenon called the reverse storm surge. Cause you know, there wouldn't be anything out there off the coast attempting to, you know, influence that hurricane or that storm system that came through, you know, there's nobody out there that we know of that, that, you know, does things like that, that does tests like that, where they, you know, attempt to disrupt and uh, influence tropical storms or hurricanes or anything like that. There would have been nobody out there with any kind of equipment or devices or the ability to be able to, you know, draw up energy off of the ocean waves and then shove it back out in inland. No, they, they don't do stuff like that. No. Uh-uh. So anyway, this negative storm surge, I think, is what was being um, influenced here, I think. It was this plasma light storm that came through that was from this very large line of energy, this bubble of energy that came into our upper atmosphere, pushed down on a, in, into our atmosphere, and created this negative electromagnetic type of effect where it was drawing up the energy from ground level like an electromagnet would and then shoved it right back down in but no this was not from water on on the window on i appreciate your comment my sky new zealand i really do i appreciate any and all comments but this was not water on the window this was an intense amount of energy being forced into our atmosphere and influencing our electromagnetic field and our atmosphere here in the southwest and like I said, because I'm repetitive, I'll say it again. I believe that this was what started the ball rolling to our extreme flash drought situation where water just dried up around here. I mean, it just disappeared. And that's what happens when you microwave things, you know, to cause an extreme flash drought situation like what we experienced. This would definitely do it. A microwave radiation effect would definitely do it. It would come in and it would dry up all of the moisture, even the moisture that is underground and in underground reservoirs. It would dry it right up. And what would that do? Why would they do something like that? Gee, I don't know. Um, maybe because they want to put forth all of these renewable energies and they have all of these plans of putting in all of these really expensive um, solar array fields out here in Nevada and they need funding for it. And I don't know. When you declare an emergency and you declare a crisis, it kind of opens up the floodgates for federal funding. And that seems to be what the state of Nevada is doing. And the Department of Energy out here in Nevada is doing is investing a lot of money into these so-called renewable energy sources and these solar array fields along our dry lake beds and all of the dried up areas out here. And they need these areas to stay dry while the contractors continue to build and put up and construct all of these solar array fields out here in Nevada. They need the territory to stay dry. This is a tactic that has been used in ev almost every country that we occupy and have a military base in. We have somehow or another influenced and restructured the climate in that area to accommodate for a military base and an installation. Okay, it's a common practice with the military, with the Navy, with the Corps of Engineers, with the Army. They all do it. All right. And I believe that is what's going on here on a massive scale in Nevada. And nobody wants to talk about it because according to them, it's justified because we have this emergency. We have this extreme drought emergency. Our water is drying up. And therefore, the energy company needs to try, uh, charge more money, you know, so that they can then, you know, make sure that we have a secure grid by securing all these solar array fields and everything. You know, there are, there's a lot of money, you know, it's expensive. There's a lot of money invested into putting up these solar array fields out there. They can't very well have a storm system or anything coming through and threatening that with a flash flood or with a monsoonal type of uh, precipitation event where water is just dropped in buckets and deluged. They can't have that because that threatens what they would consider critical infrastructure. As long as they continue to lean forward and move forward with this renewable energy thing, they can then go forth and... Um, make sure that our that there are a great number of residents and civilians 
that are all dependent on these solar array fields and these solar systems and these so-called renewable systems, while at the same time, they're keeping their critical infrastructure and their essential infrastructure on the hard lines, because those are proven. The hard lines, the cabled systems, okay? Those have already been proven to protect against these types of things right here. What hasn't been tested yet are the massive solar array fields. And that's what they are going through and going to be continuing to test out here, all right? They are attempting to create a situation where they are the only ones on the hard lines. They are the only ones that will be fully and completely and totally protected from all of these elements and all of these threats, okay? And it will be all of the civvies and the civilian population that will be on these vulnerable systems that are going to be subject to weather changes and climate change, like the solar array fields, like the wind systems and the wind turbines, okay? That's what they're working towards. That's what I believe. And I'm telling y'all, as soon as they get that established, where they have all of their critical infrastructure and their essential infrastructure on all of the hard lines, and they've created that separation where it's only the residential and the civvies that are on the soft lines and on the vulnerable lines, they are going to start popping this shit off hard. Okay. And that's, it's terrifying to think about on that level, but that's how they do. They care more about their critical infrastructure and their, what they would consider essential infrastructure in order to continue the government as it's known. And one thing that y'all have to remember that with all of this continuity of government operations and all these coops going on, these continuity of operations at the local level, if you look up, I guarantee in your city, in your town and in your state, I guarantee you there has been implemented for some reason or another, some crisis or another, if not COVID, a continuity of operations, a COOP. Look it up. If there were other events that were occurring in certain areas like there are right now with all of these storms going on and these horrendous storm systems that are happening, I guarantee you that are, there are emergencies being declared on the local level where they are effectively deploying and actively using COOP, COOP, continuity of operation plans of resilience and recovery. I guarantee you, look it up. And they're going to continue to subject us to these things until more of the essential things are completely hardened. We're going to continue to get tested on it. And they are separating us. They are putting themselves and all governmental installations and all important people in the elites are all going to have the hard lines, which are proven protected. And all the civvies, we're going to be left on the vulnerable lines. And those will fail. I guarantee you, they will make sure that they fail. So... I don't, this is not water on the window, hon. I appreciate your comment. I really do. But this is not water on the window. This was a directed energy type of a beam, a direct directed energy type of a bubble that was directed right towards the Southwest, towards our location here out in the, the Southwest. And this whole area right here has been dry, drying up ever since. And now we're superheating because they are superheating the upper ionosphere with heart that's up here in Alaska. Okay. They are beaming and they are creating that heat dome effect that is really heating us up. And I, quite frankly, I am just, I am so over all of this, in these hundred plus degree days. It's ridiculous what they are putting us through out here. And it's really testing things out here, isn't it? Having this extreme heat. And there's all kinds of solar of array fields and solar plants that are all planned out here. They've already got geothermal going on up here to the north. Big time geothermal going on out here. And... You know, I, it's, they have to keep this area dry. They have to, because they have a lot of underground installations out through here, throughout this whole area as well, that they cannot have water inundating and permeating down into their underground installations either. So they have it justified in their mind by keeping this intentionally dry and superheating it and evaporating out all of the moisture. They're protecting our national security and our national critical infrastructure and all of our infra essential infrastructure out here in Nevada too. So that we can keep our power on and all of that kind of stuff. At least that's the excuse that they tell themselves, you know. But I don't know. I, I just don't. I don't trust them. It's already been proven that they have no qualms and they have no problem with conducting tests and creating scenarios and events that then test their systems with no regard for the civilian population. They have no problem with that. They have no problem using us as test subjects, folks. If you're not aware of that, they have no problem with that. They've done it for decades. So it, it's interesting, too, that this would have been on the 60th anniversary. Six years ago, in 2018, when this occurred, when this event occurred, it would have been the 60-year anniversary from when Werner von Braun supplied the rocket that then launched up into the upper atmosphere and allowed the, one of the first high-altitude nuke detonations to occur to happen in 1958 to the day on August 11th of 1958 
they launched on a Werner von Braun rocket, one of the first high altitude nuke tests. And these people run on schedules. Okay. So back in 1958, when they performed the first test and every decade after, they have been hardening all of those vulnerable points and all of those weak points that presented themselves during, it was, I believe, called Orange. There was a uh, hard tack, Operation Hard Tack, where they detonated several different nukes and out in the extreme South Pacific, which had been right out in this area where this line of energy was coming from. And uh, I believe it was called Orange. Orange was the one that was detonated on August 11th of 1958. And what it presented to them in investigating the aftermath of it were weak points and vulnerabilities in critical systems that they were developing at the time. Those systems were installed with those resilience issues and those vulnerabilities and those weak points welded and corrected. And then another test was performed. And there's probably been tests going on every decade since. And 60 years to the day later, I believe they did another test. And, you know, the, these military folk and the Department of Energy and the Department of Defense you know, they, they really don't have a limit on their budgets. They really don't. You can sit there and say, oh, well, you know, Congress, we gave them this much. They don't have a, they don't have any limits. Whatever they need, they get. OK, all of that type of shit with all of this funding and all of that fluff that goes on where they show us the defense budgets and all of this shit. And then they get this uh, the government accountability office doing these audits where they present us with a bunch of numbers and stuff. That's all bullshit because they ultimately have a black budget. They have a limitless budget. They get what they need. And they have it justified in their mind to, you know, pop off these scenarios and these situations to test our critical infrastructure. They have it justified and they don't care. They really don't care about what the civvies think. They really don't. They've proven that. So I, I think it's a, it's a bit disturbing to see. And I'll show you real quick here before I end this video. It's already too long. I'm sure there ain't anybody even watching still, but. Um, there's still balloons drifting out over us and in their EMP scenarios. And in their own published documents, they talk about the delivery systems that would be most effective for delivering an EMP over a certain target area. And in one of their scenarios, it's to detonate one right over the middle of the United States. And they've had these balloons drifting over for going on two months now that some of these balloons have been drifting over up at around 60,000, between 50 and 60,000. This one's up over a little, 60, little over 60,000. That one is up at 66,000. So that one's up there pretty high. But anyways, they've been drifting these things over us for a couple of months now. And this is the number one chosen most efficient delivery system for a high altitude nuke test, which would generate an EMP, which would then test every installation and every critical essential infrastructure across the entire United States. And I just, I don't consent. But anyway. Again, because I'm repetitive, I'll say it one last time. I do not believe this was caused from water on the window. I believe that this was an intense amount of electromagnetic energy that was directed into Southwest United States from the extreme South Pacific back on August 11, 2018. Exactly 60 years since they had last created an EMP, an electromagnetic event. Thanks for watching. Know that I appreciate you and that you matter very much to me. I appreciate your comment, My Sky New Zealand. I really do. And I appreciate any and all comments. But with all due respect, that's not from water on the window, hon.